now let's do this by ray tracing. Okay. Uh, and now all I'm going to do for the ray tracing is uh, I'm going to suppose I already know where the object is and to try to figure out where the image should be. So let's say that the object is all the way out here. It helps here to draw close focal points to get everything to work out well. So. drawing this to scale so much, but actually this uh, 380 is about, uh, what, six times further. So actually this isn't too much exaggerated. This really was about six times, so it's a long way past the focal point. Okay, uh, here's the object, and now we're going to try to uh, get what the image is. You Let's need, go. You need a uh, divide your lens. You mean the middle point? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good habit. Yeah. So we're going to start with the P-ray. So what does the incoming P-ray look like when you're ready? It's parallel to the axis. So, and I'll draw an arrow to show that's incoming. All right, and what happens to the outgoing P-ray when you're ready? Parallel goes to the middle. Or, I'm, I'm sorry, the uh, outgoing bends what we consider to bend in the uh, mm -hmm. And it's going to converge. Now, careful, let's take a look at the handout. For a converging mirror, the outgoing ray goes through the focal point on the same side as the outgoing ray. Oops, so it should go through this focal point over here. Okay. By the way, there might be some other situations, say with a diverging ray, where the outgoing ray would look like this, and it would be the traceback that would go through the focal point on the other side. That's what the, uh, the handout is trying to convey over here. For a diverging lens, the outgoing ray would be in line with the focal point on the opposite side. Mm -hmm. uh, but that didn't apply here. Here we had a converging ray. So. This makes sense because it should make it converge towards the axis. So this was uh, not something I should draw. All right, so the P ray comes in parallel and goes out in line with the focal point. Correct. All right, and then the other way we want to draw is the M ray. Yes. So what does the incoming M ray look like? It goes to the middle. All right, and then I made such a big distance here, it's going to be a little hard to uh, draw that. but. All right, so that's approximately going into the middle here. Mm -hmm. And then what's the outgoing M ray look like? It's going uh, it's, to, it doesn't bend, it's just going to continue. It just goes straight through the middle. So this is actually a very simple ray. It goes straight out. And let's drop where the image is. Got that? All right. The image is where the outgoing rays converge, or their tracebacks. Well, is this going to be where the outgoing rays converge, or is it going to be where their tracebacks converge? Where their outgoing converge. Yeah, we already would have predicted that, because we were predicting a real image. And a real image is where the outgoing rays converge. So we can make our little arrow here for the image. OK, and what are the properties of this image just by looking at it? It's inverted. What else? And it's real. It's real. Exactly as we predicted up front. So everything matches up with the chart uh, that we got. All right, so here's how we would draw the ray tracing uh, in this case. Um, again, the ray tracing is really most useful just as a kind of a backup or a confirmation uh, to what you get from the chart and from the algebra. The main reason we're going through it is just because instructors like to ask you to do the ray tracing. OK, so the, the ray, you had no trouble with the M ray. You had a little trouble with the P ray. The outgoing P ray is in line with the focal point. So it should go through the focal point over here. And again, we're not going to bother drawing the F ray. We only need two rays. So these are the two easier rays to draw. So now we've had practice with two examples of ray tracing here. OK, um, good. And this ended up being shrunk. Can I have this copy? Oh yeah, that's for you, absolutely. Does that make sense? Any yes. questions? Can I erase this? Yes. All right. So what does this tell us mathematically? 
<clears throat> what variable does this tell us about? Um, F, whether it's um, greater than right. zero or less than zero. And what does it tell us? That it is uh, less than zero. Good. All right, so you can see one thing you're going to want to do is memorize that table of all the diverging and converging. All right, so that would be important uh, in uh, this case. How about what would this tell us mathematically? This would tell us that f is greater than zero. Yeah, I drew this kind of reverse <coughs> table, but this is a converging mirror. Good. Now, the big mistake people make is they say, aha, this means i is positive. But no. The focal length, is the, this is the device, so we talk about the focal length of the device over here. Okay, good. Um, so if you have a virtual image, what variable does that tell you about? I. And what does it tell you about it? That it's negative. Right. To me, that's kind of intuitive because virtual is a kind of negative sounding word. Real is more of a positive sounding word. Uh, if I tell you something is upright, what does that tell us mathematically? So mathematically, this would tell us we have a positive F. Good. Uh, what does it tell us mathematically if we know that uh, we have an image that's shrunk? What variable does that tell us about? That the magnitude of M is less than zero, or less than one. Okay, good. And it's good that you mentioned that it was a magnitude. Um, this could be how uh, this could be either positive or negative, but the magnitude of the dot is going to be less than one. Okay, good. And we've also seen that object distances are always positive, unless you have multiple lenses or mirrors. Um, so we're just going to stick with a positive uh, object distance here. All right. Uh, so here we have our chart. Okay, well, I guess we're out of time for today. So you have the handouts. So the purpose of the handouts is to be studied. So you should sit down and really uh, study those handouts. There might be a couple things we haven't talked about there, but anything we've talked about the handouts, you should try to... Uh, go over. You can see uh, uh, it's really easy to get confused about all these different signs and magnitudes and stuff. So you just want to keep drilling yourself um, on that. Uh, as always, one thing that would be great is just to redo the problems we just did. Um, so hopefully you marked which questions in the book we just did. Just go back and redo those problems and make sure you can get those right on your own. I would do that before you do any of the other problems. Before you do any new problems, make sure you can just redo the problems we already did. These videos are offered on a pay what you like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There is a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos.htm or you can just use the link in the info box. By the way, I also offer tutoring via Skype and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service at my website. Thanks.